Sunday, okay? So as you come, bring your family with you. I want to minister to you on this subject, remember, remember. How we need to remember, my brothers and my sisters, how we need to remember. To those of you worshiping God with us online, thank you again for the privilege you have given us to come to your house. We bless you in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ. And those who are here, I thank God for your presence. And those of you who are visiting with us, we welcome you again. How we need to remember, how we need to remember. In this world where we experience pain and suffering, my brothers and my sisters, physical devastation, emotional devastation that we have experienced as people, we have seen our friends, our neighbor experiencing pain. Just one week ago, a friend of mine, a professor at the University of Maryland, a guy born in the Congo like me, worked his way, went to South Africa, did his master's degree, did his PhD degree, and got one of the best opportunities in the world. The University of Maryland gave him a position. He became a professor there. And, you know, firstborn in his family. Firstborn in his family. All of us proud of him. He moved to a new location, a new place. He rent a U-Haul like we all do. Put his stuff in that U-Haul, they move. He has a wife and a child. Then after they've emptied the uh, you all, he said, I'm going to return it. Just return the you all. And he called for a Uber, waiting for that taxi to come to pick him so it can go back, he can go back to the house. From nowhere, a drunk driver passed by and just ran over my friend, and my friend is dead. What a bad news. What a bad news. Then when you turn on the TV today, you look at the houses that are being just washed away. People who have lost everything that they have because the rain came and just take everything. You watch international news. The world is in turmoil. There is trouble everywhere. You know, then you begin to realize how fragile our life is. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, we own nothing Empty-handed we came into this world and empty-handed we shall leave. Now in, this, in the midst of all this desolation, in the midst of all this suffering, look at the na name and numbers of disease that are in the world. Some, we cannot even cure them. And every day sometimes we are afraid that there may be something again like COVID-19. We don't know what is next. We live our lives in fear. The reality of suffering, desolation, is a reality. Now, there are those who will say, well, we need to acknowledge that our sins has brought this judgment. God is judging the world. Uh, that's why we experience all this pain and those suffering. You know, again, that is another theological, long theological debate, whether we are suffering because we have sinned against God or abandoned the name of God and whatever it is. This morning, I did not come to engage you into a long philosophical and a theological debate. I've come to reflect with you on the fact, the reality, that even though sometimes I doubt, even though sometimes I experience pain, even though sometimes I acknowledge that it does not make sense, nevertheless, I still believe. I still believe. This morning I'm here to tell you I still believe. I still believe in the goodness of God. I still believe in the love of God. I still believe that there is hope. I still believe there is restoration because the Bible says God renew his love and his compassion every morning. That's the news I have for you and I this morning. I've come to encourage you and I've come to encourage myself. There are those among us who have experienced loss devastation, disappointment. Maybe you are here, you have been praying for something and your prayer are not answered the way you wanted. Maybe you still have doubt. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not going to judge you and blame you for you because you are doubting. You see, doubt is part of our human expression. We are human beings and there are times in our life we are going to experience doubt. 
But I'm encouraged today that our faith in God is able to help us overcome our doubts. Our faith, that little faith, you know, Jesus is not requiring a bigger faith. When you read the Old, the New Testament, Jesus is not talking about having a big faith. Jesus said, just a small faith. That small faith that I have in the goodness of God, that I can have hope in the midst of lament. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, when my soul remember my suffering, when my eyes see the devastation, the suffering and the desolation in the world, what is it that I'm going to remind myself? And this I will recall and call my mind to say I have hope. I have hope because the steadfast love of God never ceases. The compassion of God never ends. God renew his compassion every morning. This is what scripture says. God renew his love every morning. There is this daily renewal of the compassion of God. Yes, I have to remind myself about the love of God and the compassion of God. I have to encourage myself to look forward with hope. I have to encourage myself and live my life from the perspective of hope. There is hope because there is God. Yes, I have to remember this. I'm encouraging you in difficult times to remember the promises of God, that God can provide comfort, God can provide the strength. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, just remember, number one, that God is with you, that God is with us. Yes, God is with me. And that sometimes I may not feel it. It's not about how we feel. We don't move with our emotion. We move with what God says. Because there will be days you will feel like you are very close to God. There will be days where you feel the presence of God. You will wake up with what I call an hallelujah moment. If you have experienced that, where you wake up, you are just singing, I believe you are all that I need. Lord, I trust in you. But there will be those moments where it feels like heaven has been shut up, shut down, that your prayers cannot even go beyond the ceiling. There will be days where you feel alone, feel like there is a chasm, a big distance between you and God. In those moments, you don't rely on your feelings. You rely on the word of God. Jesus promised I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Throughout the New Testament and the Old Testament, God said to God's people, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. Isaiah 41 verse 10, God promised I am with you. So remember, when you are going through difficult time, when you are overwhelmed, by issues in your life. When you begin to lose your peace and your world is crumbling and collapsing, life is filled with ups and downs. Yes, you have lived long and you know that our lives is not on cruise control. You know, I love cruise control. You know, my first car was uh, manual. I learned how to drive with a stick and shift, you know. It's, it's fun, it's, it's fun, but when I came to the United States, I tried the automatic one. Oh, no, it was good. It, it was good. It's you know, just a lazy driving. You know, you just put it on drive, and, you, and then a friend of mine explained to me now how to put it on cruise control. So, you know, you just set it up, and everything is just going. And I remember I was a student. Uh, I, I, I had a chance to bought a big car, a, a roadmaster from an old guy in Alexandria City. That car was just driving. It was so nice when you put it on 75, it's just flying like that. You know, it's just going, and then I'll just feel, oh, Emmanuel, you have arrived. It's just driving. But it's not like that until you see the police. <laughs> and then there is an interruption there. Life is not always going to be on cruise control. There will be those moments where you will be on top of your game. And there will be also days where you are going to be at the bottom. You are going to experience 
the hardship of life. You are going to receive a bad report from the doctor about your health. You are going to receive a bad report from the doctor about your spouse. You, you, you may receive a bad report about your work. You may just feel uncomfortable. It is not always going to be. It is not always going to be there. Christ never promised us that everything is going to be fine. Christ never say, just believe with me and everything will be fine. But yet Christ says, I will be with you through our ups and down. So if you are up, praise the Lord. If you are down, praise the Lord anyhow, as you are encouraging yourself. So remember, the goodness of God renew themselves every morning. Remember the compassion of God never end. God never stop, never cease to love you. Remember, remember, renew that, that every morning God says, I am with you. Because God is with us, we are going to remember, my brothers and my sisters, that the presence of God provides assurance for us that we are never alone. Even in our darkest moment, even on our lowest point, when we have reached bottom down, we must always be reminded that the presence of God provides assurance for us. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, remember, remember, God is with us. You are to remember that even when you are in trouble, God promised to give us comfort, comfort, comfort. Christ says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Yes, God promised to those who grieve and suffer. God promised that I'm going to give you comfort in that moment of pain. When you feel somebody has overlooked you, when, when you feel like nobody cares, God says, I am going to comfort you. So every morning, as you remember, God is with you. Also remember the promise of comfort. Can you just say this little prayer? God, give me your comfort. Give me your comfort. Give me your peace. There are times where you, you, you don't need that long prayer. You, you don't need all these verses of the Bible. You don't need to know scripture from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. It's just those moments where you say to the Lord, give me your peace. I want your peace. I want your comfort. God promise, I am with you that I will provide comfort. Do not be afraid. Do not fear, for I am with you. Christ says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will receive comfort. My brothers and my sisters, we need to remember. Remember that God will give us strength in our time of weaknesses. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 9. The Apostle Paul is saying something so powerful. When he asked God to give him something, his prayer did not go the way he wanted. God did not answer the prayer the way he wanted. Yet God is telling the Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weaknesses. My grace is sufficient. Yes, the grace of God is sufficient. Never undermine the fact of the grace of God. The grace of God is sufficient. God's grace can meet you at the point of your need. God's grace is available. You don't merit that. You don't have to do something to receive it. We have received the grace of our position. And that grace will lead us home. That grace is with us. That grace will make room for us. That grace will lead us. The grace of our position. And what it is, is John chapter 1 verse 12. Those who have received Jesus Christ, God has given them the right to be called the children of God. You are a child of God, so you have a position. God has given you the grace of that position. And always remember that the grace of God is sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient. God, your grace is sufficient. You see, that's why I love you hear me pray, God, meet me at the point of my need. Let your grace locate me. Let your grace find me. And do for me what I cannot do for myself, because that's what grace does. Grace is unmerited, something that we receive without any effort. You don't need to do anything 
to receive it or to earn it. You know, that's the problem with us religious people. We always want to earn something. We want to do something. We feel like we need to get it from the Lord. We need to impress God. Now, if we are going to earn grace from God by doing something, then Christ died in vain. The death of Jesus Christ from the cross and the resurrection from the dead is sufficient. That's the definition of the grace of God, that he died for our sins and he rose so that we may be justified. And this morning as we come to remember the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are saying, God, your grace is sufficient. God, I don't know where I am. God, I, I, I may be... I may be in a place where I'm confused, but I know your grace is sufficient. I may be in a place of doubt, but I know your grace is sufficient. I may be in a place of disappointment, but I know your grace is sufficient. You know what grace does? Grace tells us that even a disappointment becomes opportunity for another divine appointment. When you operate under the grace of God, grace tells you, that a dead end is not a dead end, it's just an opportunity for another destination, the beginning of another destination. That's why we do not despair. When we live under the grace of God, if one door closes, another one will open. That's the grace of God. God will make it possible. Come on, somebody. Grace is sufficient. Come on, somebody. Grace is sufficient. Remember that. The grace of God is sufficient. So remember, God's compassion renew themselves every morning. As we experience God's unfailing love, my brothers and my sisters, there is hope. Hope in remembrance. What is it that we remember? We remember that God is with us. What is it that we remember? We remember that God will comfort us when we mourn. God will comfort us when we go through uh, grief and suffering. God is going to comfort us. God will provide strength in our weakness because the grace of God is sufficient. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, even when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, David is singing, the Lord is my shepherd. In other words, he's saying, God is my peace. The peace of God that is beyond all human understanding. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I know God is with me. God's goodness is with me. God always offers peace that surpasses our understanding even in the midst of chaos and uncertainty. The peace of God, it is available. This is what we are to remember. I want you to remember this morning that there is hope, that there is a future. Because Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God is saying, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Yes, there is hope, there is future. When we, 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 we trust in the Lord, my brothers and my sisters, we rise above our challenge of that moment Many times we allow our condition, our circumstances to undermine our faith in God. You know, there are those who have lost hope. There are those who, when they look at the future, they don't even acknowledge that there is a future. There are those people that when you listen to them, they are so negative, negative, negative. You know, there are people who say everything is bad, everything is bad. Ah, come on, guys. Uh, come on, let's not joke. When I saw on TV people losing their house, water rising in your house, you lose your car, you lose everything. And now, you know, God has blessed us. We are in a place where we did not experience that. But that can also come to us here in harvest. What will your life look like if it was you? My brothers and my sisters, we must learn to rise above the challenge of our time. And always live our life with that perspective of hope and the future. Because God holds the future. Remember the song the little children sing for us last Sunday uh, when we had uh, uh, the learning uh, uh, center uh, uh, Sunday. You remember? Uh, two weeks ago, they, they say he has the whole world in his hands. Just remember that. God has the whole world in his hands. Remember that. In other words, God is in control. You know, uh, 
I, I know sometimes we push our mind, what does that mean? God is in control. I may not understand it, but I know God is in control. Yes, God is in control. You know, I love the faith of the little children. The children have so, they have faith and confidence in their parents that, you know, there were times I have no money in my bank account, but yet my children believe that I will still be able to provide a gift for them. You know, uh, comes Christmas, they will give me their list of the things that they want. Now, even though I will say I don't have the money, that was not their problem. They knew somehow the money will be there. Somehow they will have their gift. It was not their concern, you know, whether there is food in the house or there is none. That was my problem. We will find a way for them to have a nice Christmas party. They had faith. Isn't it Christ is also inviting us to have faith like children? To trust God at that level that God will take care of us? And not to be agitated, not to lose hope, not, not to allow our blood pressure to shoot up because of circumstances that we cannot control. Yes, remember God is in charge. God is in control. Therefore, there is hope and there is a future. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, as we encourage ourselves in the Lord, May we never lose sight that if God was able to give his son on our behalf, God is able to do anything. God gave us his best. God gave his son so we can be reconciled with God, so that we can earn this position of privilege that we have. We carry the name of God. The DNA of God flows in our vein, and we belong to God. So as we come this morning to the Lord's table, we come with the confidence of God's children. We remember, we remember the grace of God that is sufficient. So as we encounter the presence of God in our lives, we come with our burden. May you come to the table this morning with that spirit of surrender. Come to exchange, come. According to the word of God, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are tired. Come with your burden and leave them to the Lord. Come with the faith of the woman who had the issue of blood. For 12 years as she suffered, she said, if I can only touch a piece of his garment, if I can touch his clothes, my life will be transformed. Come with that spirit. Come with the spirit of the blind man, Bartimaeus, who heard the story about Jesus Christ and say, Son of David, have mercy on me. Come with that spirit. Come, my brothers and my sisters. Come. Come and encounter the Lord. Let God take charge. Let God fix what is broken. And may the peace of God, that is beyond all human understanding, come upon you. Remember, the love of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God never cease. God renew them. God renew them every morning. So new every morning is your compassion. Forget about yesterday. Forget about last year. Forget about the pain of yesterday. God is giving you another chance, another opportunity to experience the glory of God. What did not work yesterday, God is able to do something new for today and for tomorrow. Praise be to God. Jesus Christ died. On the night, he gave up himself for us. He took the bread. He broke the bread, and he gave it to the disciple and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Likewise, when the supper was over, he took the cup. After he's given thanks, he gives it to the disciple and say, take and drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. Pour out for the forgiveness of your sin. We have a covenant with God. We belong to God, and God never breaks God's covenant. So we come with the confidence of God's children. Those who will help me, would you please come forward? And the band can come as well. And those of you at home who wants to partake with us, 
You can have your bread, your juice, your water. Come as we celebrate this moment of remembrance. We remember God is with us. I remember God is with me. I remember God says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, upon this element of bread and juice. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon those at home, upon the element at home. Make this element be for us a reminder of the body of Christ, of the cup of salvation, of our relationship with God, of the price that you paid for us. Uh, this is the highest expression of your love for us. God, you are real. And now as your people will come to partake to this element, may we encounter your presence. May we experience something different. Renew us. Give us a fresh perspective. And give us your peace. In Jesus' name. Let all of God's people say amen. Amen. Bread of heaven.